There are many ways that you can be inadmissible to Canada. Today, I'm going to focus on misrep, but let's take an overview of other factors of uh, inadmissibility. No matter whether you are applying for a tourist visa, study visa, work visa, PR, or, or any application to enter Canada, whether at the border or at the High Commission, uh, there are ways that you can be outrightly rejected because of uh, inadmissibility. And what are those inadmissibility? Let's take a look. Uh, for security reasons, you could be inadmissible because you may have engaged in espionage, subversion, violence, or terrorism, or membership in any organization involved in any of these. The first reason. The second is human or international rights violations, could be war crimes, crimes against humanity, being a senior official in the government, engage in grass, human rights violation or subject to international uh, sanctions. Number three, committing a crime, including driving under the influence of drugs. This is very important. Uh, not that the first is not important, but you know, many people believe that they can hide their crime or they have any crime they don't have to disclose it to the visa officer, or maybe the crime is uh, too trivial or too small in their in their understanding, or maybe they have been discharged. Or perhaps uh, you know they have they got a clean police clearance certificates and that's why this crime does not have to be disclosed, including driving under influence of drugs or alcohol. This is a major reason of misrepresentation uh, to many uh, temporary applications to Canada. Uh, the next one is organized crime. This is quite self-evident. If you have been uh, smuggling, money laundering, or criminal activity, people smuggling anything, uh, that's that will make you inadmissible. Medical reasons. Uh, if you have an illness that will endanger public health, maybe you have Ebola virus or, you know, maybe, I don't know, coronavirus or some other. If, if your medical problem can endanger public health, you will be inadmissible or public safety. Maybe you, you are, uh, you know, you have a, one of those terminal fatal diseases that can endanger public safety. Yes, that's second reason for medical. And number three is which can cause excessive demand on health or social services. Of course, the rules are changing. And last, uh, I think, year, they changed the rules and make it a little higher. So you can have a little higher, they can accept a higher demand on, on uh, health and social services and still will approve you. So uh, we will talk about this later on. If you have a specific question, then I can answer this question on excessive demand. But typically, if you have... Uh, small problem like i you know somebody was asking me you know my i have a little handicap or maybe i i i um i cannot walk i use wheelchair or something will that mean i will be inadmissible no in most cases you will not but if you have a very high level of uh, perhaps sugar or kidney disease or some other kind of um, uh, problem that requires intensive continuous medication and the cost is very high uh, and there's a limit listed on their website, then you will likely be inadmissible, all right? So the next one is financial reasons. If you are coming uh, to Canada, if you're unable or unwilling to support yourself and family members, you will be inadmissible. Many cases when, when we see in express entry, if you don't have adequate proof of funds, your application will be denied. In in cases where, uh, you know, where you are going for a study visa or a work visa, if you don't have sufficient proof of funds depending on what category they will still deny you they will not make you inadmissible but they still deny you so financial reason is also one of the important reasons and the next one which is our topic uh, which uh, which we will provide some more uh, case uh, studies here is called misrepresentation this is one of my um, uh, favorite uh, the asked questions or uh, all-time record questions of people asking about misrep is that if they do not disclose something on the application form and the later visa office finds out that you were hiding something and they say, sorry, you've been misrepresenting, bye-bye, five years span. And we will look at some cases. The next one is failure to comply with the provision of AIRPA. That's too broad to discuss here. If you violate something in Canada or in even overseas, if you violate a, a section of law, maybe you were working unauthorized, they will make you inadmissible. Uh, or having an inadmissible family member. So if you have a family member who has been charged with inadmissibility, so that will make you also. So your spouse has done a crime or in, you know, any, any infringement, that will make you as, as well.
So what we will talk in this series is misrepresentation and uh, I'll provide you some case studies so that you can learn obviously from other people's mistakes so that you will not do the mistakes on your own. And uh, I will present many cases. I have made a list of close to 15 to 20 cases and I will provide at the regular intervals case number one, case number two, and then we can go from there. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned and of course, uh, leave your comments.